Hello and welcome to another episode of Lex Education, the comedy science podcast where comedian me, Laura Lex, tries to learn science from her 2023 brother Ron. Hey, it's me, Ron. Hi, Ron. How's it going? Do you know what? It's not December anymore, Ron. We're finally back in the present. Yeah, we're 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 back at the grindstone. And do you know what's happened? I've forgotten everything that we did last year. That's how I feel every week. <laughs> so that's good. It was a bit like getting back to it this week, probably, because we'd queued up like five episodes to go out one after the other so we could both have a proper holiday over Christmas. And then this week I was like, right, I've got to listen to this episode. I've got to do a quiz for last week. Got to do a new thingy. Got to put the notes on. Got to, oh, man, there's a lot of tiny jobs. But, transcripts coming out the wazoo that I've re-put on the blog. But we did both say we missed it while we weren't doing it. I did miss it a lot. Yeah, no, I didn't. I'm not sad about it. I had, I've had, i had a, a fun time. It was just making sure I had hold of every straw again, you know? Mm. You know yeah. me? Control enthusiast to quote the ever brilliant Sarah Yeah, Morgan. Y- you're spinning a lot of, um, you know, small to medium-sized plates. I have just the one slog of <laughs> doing of reading a GCSE syllabus, which <laughs> I'll tell you guys for free, it's not a page turner. <laughs> um, hey, we've got before we jump into the episode, we've got huge news this week. Firstly, top of the leaderboard, a happy, slightly slash very belated birthday to Tim. Happy birthday, Tim, for the seventh of January. Um, your lovely wife, Rachel. Hello, Rachel. Emailed us back in December, but we'd already pre-recorded the intros up until now. But we wanted to say happy birthday for back in January. Um, Ron will be doing you a finger painting for. Or the Instagram. Yep. He's choose, just learned about that. Choose your food stuff. Yep. <laughs> it's got to be something that's widely available in the Brussels area. Um, we hope you're having a, you've had a lovely birthday. And we're very glad to be one of the few podcasts where you've made it past the second episode. Apparently, Tim is a... Uh, gives up very early on so hey are you still here 30 episodes later that would be nice nice yeah i feel like i do that with podcasts but i try for 30 and then decide i hate it (laughs) yeah um i think i think once i've listened to that many things though i just keep listening because i'm like oh well we're friends now (laughs) (laughs) it would be rude to stop now (laughs) what if i affected their numbers i think that is how i feel i just let them all download and then i delete them (laughs) I don't want to be rude, and there's endless 5G. But anyway, happy birthday, Tim. You're not rude. No, you are... Lo- well, Rachel's not... Tim might be horrible. We don't know. Rachel's lovely, though. She got in touch, and she clearly cares about But Rachel's Tim. lovely, and then if Ra- if Tim was rude, Rachel wouldn't be lovely, Tim. That's true. Um, so, happy birthday, Tim. Thank you. We've got two new reviews on the old Apple. And, and thank you to everybody that's been giving us stars on Spotify as well. That really helps. We've seen such incredible download numbers over Christmas. Um, we're really happy with that. So, thank you, Joshua Squashy, for your review. And thank you, Can't Sleep 11A, for your um, review. I do believe that is um, Josh from Friends of the Podcast, Just Films and That. Ah, thanks, Josh. How delightful. And I also wanted to say hello to Amy in Pennsylvania, who did send us a Neil deGrasse Tyson video about tides. I was in Pennsylvania very recently. Yeah, you were, on your Mexico trip. I had a horrible time changing at Philadelphia Airport. (laughs) Well, Ron, speaking of your changing and your trip, what other huge news do we have? We launched a Patreon. We did. We've launched a Patreon. Now, listen, we do not expect everybody to have the finances to join, and that is absolutely fine. This podcast will remain free, um, always and forever, um, probably. Maybe one day we'll get an advertising thing, and that will be happy. Yeah. But, hey, if not, we love putting it out, and we hope that you love it too. If you would like an extra um, sort of little, what we're calling, extracurricular activity every month, and you'd like to help us keep the podcast running by helping us with the financial overheads, we've set up, it's just one tier, it's just £3 a month to put towards the costs of the podcast, and then for that you get an extra episode every month. It won't 
be the syllabus so that we aren't letting people miss out if they can't afford it. Um, we're doing extra stuff. And the first episode will be a geography lesson where Ron tells me all about his trip to Mexico. Yes, which was so action-packed, we're going to have to do two episodes. But we've got lots in the chamber. It's basically, if you like all the silly gubbins we do when it's Halloween or Christmas coming up, we're going to be doing a Valentine's episode. And um, I think you wanted to do eggs for Easter, didn't you? Um, yes. Yeah, if you like all... If you like... Look, um, I didn't know, but apparently my friend Max listens to um, the podcast and he told another friend of ours that he is apparently sad when we start talking about the science because he just likes it when we're chatting shit. If you're in the same camp as Max, you'll love the Patreon. Yeah, we've got lots of plans. I'm going to be talking to Ron about humour theory and joke theory. We are hoping to get our dad involved to um, have a little corner with dad where he tells us about... Agony dad. Yeah, maybe aren't answering some of your problems we think would be very funny because dad's solution to every problem is well, I don't know, just don't be an idiot um so that'll be fun uh and what else have we got detentron <laughs> laura does a uh, yes it's it's after school because laura's rejected a commonly held premise i the, we've recorded an episode of that just on glass because laura didn't think that was real i did think it was real it just wasn't anyway so there we go there's a patreon if you fancy that um, go to patreon.com forward slash Lex Education and join the crew. Thank you to the people that signed up already. We just set it up thinking, well, we're going to launch in February, but we'll set the page up now. And we were overwhelmed by people joining up before we even had anything to give you. So thank you. That's like made our week. Yeah, really. we love that for us. Yeah. Um, right. Here you go. Here's an episode. Uh, it is chemistry this week. And we're looking at little families of elements and molecules. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly sunk in. There we go. Happy birthday, everyone. Did you say happy birthday, everyone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shut up. Hi, Ron. Hi. Uh, um, I'd say how are you, but I guess future us has just asked how each other is and people have just listened to it, so... Yeah, there have been a few episodes where we've done double chat, but... Double chat! Let's... Yeah, so, let's just lessen it up. Let's just, let's just pretend Get we... Get straight in there. Can't wait for this chemistry nonsense. Yeah, no tomfoolery today, Ron. <laughs> um, right, so... I'm sick of your dreadful speckled mug. Uh, So we are moving on to something different today. Happy? Yes, and you haven't sent me any figure A's, figure B's or figure C's on the WhatsApp web. No, nothing to look at today. And um, we're just going to chat for a bit at the beginning. Love chat! Before we even get into learning. Brilliant. Yeah, because what we're going to be talking about and like what the next sort of significant portion of chemistry is about, right? Oh, is it pouring is... stuff from flasks? I want to do that. No. Mm. Um, it's about chemical changes and reactions and what actually... changes. Do you remember that? Ozzy Osbourne and Kelly Osbourne. Oh, dreadful song. But have you heard the Charles Bradley version? Is that the original? No, Charles Bradley did a great cover of it. But that's the one that's used in um, Big Head. Well, I haven't seen Big Head. You don't need to. Oh, OK. Um, there's one very funny episode where uh, Jason Manzoukas impregnates a bath mat. But apart <laughs> from that, um, it's, 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 one, it's, you know, it's one you can miss. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what was I talking about? Chemical changes. So basically what happens um, on a chemical level when a reaction occurs? Haven't we done this? Isn't that just when we're H2O plus CH4 equals f- sugar? Like, isn't that what we're... Ba- like, that's what we're... That, that's that, isn't it? <laughs> Is that not that? Feels like that yeah, was but, that. Yeah, but we've kind of, we've kind of covered this... On other topics, now we're just going to talk about this. Oh, all right. Yeah. You know, because, yeah, we've done, like, moles and we've done different types of reaction and, do you know, like, we've done group seven and group one and stuff like that. 
But now we're just going to talk about like why these things happen. And it, it's sort of the reactivity in general is basically the subject. Okay. I don't know how I'm going to cope with this. <laughs> Did you think I was going to say react? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <gasps> um. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to start flagging halfway through this, and I'm going to need a wee, just so that you're forewarned. I already need a wee. Me too. You well, Don't guzzle more water, guzzhead. Also, you still haven't solved this noisy drinking situation that you... I got a cup out of the shelf um, to bring in and then forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I was going to. Um, yeah, so the the concept that we need to wrap our head around here is that the what is happening on the atomic and molecular scale basically adds up to the effect that we see in real life when a chemical reaction takes place, okay? Yeah, what? <laughs> You said all of that, just... And then the... I don't even know how to recreate it in gobbledygook. Adds up, same as what in the chemicals is what we're looking at. What is happening on an atomic or molecular scale adds up to the effect that we see in real life. That's very okay. Yeah, all right, yeah. (laughs) 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 <laughs> that really wasn't a stumble block sentence. <laughs> uh, it's just one of those ones where I don't hear the beginning and then I'm like, oh, shall I just nod along? And then he'll then he'll do that thing where he stops and makes me understand it out loud and, and I won't be able to. And then he'll go, but you know this. Yeah. All right, so um, now I've clarified. That's good. So, by working out what's happening... <sighs> an atomic scale um, we can not only understand the exact effect of a chemical reaction but we can start predicting what uh, will happen in other chemical react- uh, reactions with reactants with similar characteristics yeah sure <laughs> yep yeah 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 yep Like, think about it this way, right? No, I said so, yes. I repeat it back to me. Well, listen, if... <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to sit this exam. <laughs> Every question. Well, listen. Um, uh, hey. <laughs> hey, how about... <laughs> Here's the three words I can remember that relate to this, and then I'm going to work backwards from them to try and create a sentence. No, go for it. Free reign. You you have at it. On what? Working this out. Yeah, I was telling I'll give you. Give you as long as you need. I was telling you about it. I understood what you meant. So just like say, um, magnesium reacts in a certain way. It. What we can see happening is um, the same as what's happening molecularly. And then we might be able to say, oh, because of the way magnesium's made, calcium's similar. And so we can predict what calcium's going to do, but maybe plus or minus some shebang, depending on whether it's got more or less. That was remarkably close. Yeah. That was pretty bang on. Well done, Laura. Thank you. I told you I understood. We've learnt about some chemicals that react uh, with with similar characteristics before, mm-hmm. and we could predict their properties. Can you remember which ones these were? Um, it's ones that are in like the same column, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's called a group, yeah. um, and we learnt about two of these groups, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. I went on a big walk this morning. Um. For the listener, it's now 5pm. <laughs> Laura should not still be affected by this walk. Yeah, but by this morning, I mean, I left at like midday and I got back at about three. That's... So this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 I'm on a very different timetable to you, Ron. Um, we did a lot of looking at... Mm, group two and group 17, I think. Nope. Group 18 
and group one. <laughs> but don't you see things? So it was group not... one and group seven, which you call group 17. I thought we did like magnesium and stuff. No, you're right. Well, it was. Can you tell me a single thing about magnesium? <laughs> magnesium is fighty. Magnesium loves a scrap. No, you're right. It was group one, but yeah, it was 17. I don't know why you call it seven. It was 17. That's just what it's called. It's called group it's seven. It's not. Look at my atomic table. It's group 17. It's called a periodic table. <laughs> <laughs> it's about atoms, isn't it? It's not about periods. Why is it called a periodic table? Just, you have to look at it periodically. Right, I think we should change it to an atomic table. <laughs> an occasional table. Um, anyway, 17. Right. What can you remember about the properties group of group seven 1? Group 7 is manganese, technetium, rhenium and bohorium. Uh, group one. Group one are um, very reactive. Yep. They get more reactive as you go down the table. Farty bubbles. They do get more reactive when they go down the table. Do you remember why that is? Because the sad boys are that little bit further away from the... Uh, protons in the dance studio. Yep, exactly. And what can we remember out the properties of Group 17? Almost the opposite, because they're on the flip side of the board. They are very stable. Um, They don't have the spare sad boys, and they get more reactive as you go up the table. Yes. Moments like these in this podcast get me through. <laughs> You've retained that info, Laura. Yeah. It's there now. You get it. Ooh, and ooh. because we know the physics of these atoms, we can predict how different ones will react under different circumstances. And all of these weird, strange, like, you know, UUBs and stuff right at the bottom, a lot of those don't actually exist, but we can predict what their properties would be like because we know what the groups that they're in are like. Talking Basically. about a UUB, what? Oh, yours might not have. Um, uh, yours may not have um, the. You got well, your the theoretical again, elements on there. Yes. Oh, is that like actinium and thorium and prot- protocinium? No, uranium's real. Promethium. I, I don't know all of them, to be honest. Um, There's but, like yeah, 57 to 71 and 89 to 103 that's tucked out of the periodic table and drawn a little bit somewhere else. Yeah, um, no, they, they usually just... At the bottom. It doesn't matter, it doesn't really... Lanthanoids. No, those are different. Oh. Um, uh, yeah, ignore that. That's a tangent. That was just them. Um, but yeah. So, as you can see, oh, we can trace whimsy. these properties. Just a little yeah. bit of giddiness. <laughs> Another example of how we can predict chemical changes is in organic chemistry, i.e. like the reaction of different molecules to each other. Okay? Yeah. I got what? a little bit distracted then thinking about organic chemistry and it was just like chemists that were only fed on like non-pesticide grain. <laughs> no, but do you remember what organic chemistry actually is? No. Well, it's basically the study of carbon. Organic chemistry is carbon chemistry. Essentially, yes, because carbon is, you know, carbon makes the four bonds. We can build very complex structures out of it, yeah? Yes. Because all of these elements are organic, really. Um, let's not get into that. Um, edit break. I just have to reply to a message very quickly. Me more. I should reply to Tom. I've not spoken to him all day. Okay, I'm ready when you are. I was born ready and I'm ready now. Yeah, so in, in organic chemistry, we have things that are called um, functional groups, okay? 
Yep. So these are basically like little arrangements of atoms that react in the same way, even if they're on um, a different molecule, effectively. What's a molecule? <sighs> a covalently bonded. covalently bonded atoms together make a molecule. Covalent? That, that doesn't say covalently at all. Covalently. Covalently bonded atoms are a molecule. And covalent is... Sharesies. They share the two little... Co. Covalent. Yeah, valency is a thing in electrons. Then they covalent. So now go back again. What did you say? Um, So inorganic chemistry, which is the study of carbon... Mm Mm-hmm. Carbon makes molecules. It makes the four covalent bonds. Yeah. Yes. Inorganic chemistry, um, which means like, you know, proteins, DNA, uh, lipids, all of these things. Um, In these, we have things called functional groups. Yes. These are, like I say, just little arrangements of atoms that react the same way, even if they're on a different molecule. I thought for you, maybe we'd describe them as like little attachment heads that you can just like pop on and then it does a little thing, right? What do you mean an attachment head? Like a Mr. Potato head? No, I... Okay, oh god, it's so hard to pitch an analogy to you because sometimes it's really derailing, but sometimes it helps. I was picturing, like, you know, us all siblings have similar qualities, but then we go away to our own little families and we're in a different family, but we all sigh the same way. That's what it's like when, you you know, you're thinking about lithium and uh, potassium and stuff interacting. We're all siblings getting on, and I do farty bubbles in the bath, but you bibble around on the top. No, I love doing farty bubbles in the bath. Farting in the bath is one of my top hobbies. I despise baths, and I haven't had one in potentially a decade. (laughs) Um... Anyway, um, no, that yeah, so that's what it's like when we're talking about the, the atomical side of things. When we're talking about functional groups, it's, it's because the molecule is bigger than that, but then you can add on these little add-ons. God, my brain is not focusing today. I've got an example that might help, okay? Yeah, this is too whimsical. I need some real stuff to talk about. So, ethanol. Ethanol is alcohol as we know it, like drinking alcohol, the good kind. I've got a twitch in my eye. It's been like three days. No edit break there, listener. She did just say <laughs> something else. <laughs> I'm sorry, Laura. Do you... <laughs> I don't know what it is. I've had plenty of sleep. What's my eye twitching? Don't know. Ethanol is is grain alcohol. What did you Good say? Good drinking alcohol. It's, it's alcohol. Yeah, yeah. That's I knew the that. alcohol. Yeah, yeah. That's the alcohol that's in um, in drinks. Yeah, but you couldn't drink pure ethanol. It's bad for you. Uh, yeah, you, you, it would be very bad for you. Yikes! Ethanol is a two carbon chain. And then what we call a hydroxyl functional group. So that's it's carbon, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. The carbons are also bonded to hydrogens. Carbon, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. Yeah. Propanol is also an alcohol. That's what we call a molecule like this. It is a three carbon chain with a hydroxyl group on it. Carbon, 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 oxygen, hydrogen. What's this oxygen group you're talking about? The hydroxyl group is the oxygen, hydrogen on the end of it. Carbon, 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 oxygen, hydrogen, did you say? Yeah, the oxygen, hydrogen is a functional group. That is the hydroxyl group. Hydr, hydrogen, oxyl, oxygen, hydroxyl. Why don't they just... Call it an oxygen and a hydrogen. They effectively have. <laughs> you love a portmanteau. You're always trying to come up with kooky fucking names for things. Hydroxyl group sounds like like the baddies in a Christmas film, you know, that are trying to buy the old sports centre and knock it down. 
but they're going to sell it to the hydroxyl group, not Mr. Mortimer. Ah, uh, he kicked my dog once. You know? Hard to go. Um... <laughs> You see how both of these have the same thing on them? Right, so one is a CCOH and the other is a triple COH. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. These are different molecules, but they have similar properties because they share that functional group. The OH gives them their defining things. Okay. Because carbon is very laid back and bland. Do you you know, like, methane and stuff? <laughs> Oh, I'm a cow. <laughs> I saw loads of cows today on my walk. And this There's one also something cow called met- wouldn't get off the path. My friend Hattie had to go like, hey, hey, to get it to me. I'm quite scared what a of lovely cows. country adventure you've had, Laura. Have actually, yeah, have. <laughs> wow. Um, so there's also one called methanol. That is... Just one C and then an OH. CH3OH. One C and then an OH. Cool. Yeah? CH3OH. CH. Like I said, all of these carbons have <laughs> hydrogens all over them. Um, where, where are we okay? going with this? I'm explaining to you that the OH is the functional group, and it doesn't matter what, L- uh, what molecule it's on, it gives it the same properties. So as long as something's got OH in it... Muted my microphone. Sorry about that. As long as something's got OH in it, it'd be it'd behave the same. Similarly, because these ones have different carbon chains, so that's going to change their properties a bit. But you see how it's a parallel to like fluorine and chlorine and bromine and iodine and astatine all working similarly. No, why did they all work similarly? Because those are the group 17 elements that we were discussing nay five minutes ago. Stop <laughs> shouting into your microphone. <laughs> Stop what, making what, me shout. What do you mean? Yeah, I know we were talking about them. What's that got to do with this C stuff? Well, so we were talking about those things, <laughs> right? And we were discussing how they have similar properties because yeah. they're all in a group yeah. together. And then I said, well, it's actually a bit like this thing that happens in organic chemistry. And then I explained to you how if they have these functional groups on different molecules, they have similar but not the same properties because they have the functional group in the same. And then I said, it's a bit like in group seven that we were speaking about nay five minutes ago. And then you said, why are we talking about that? And it's probably because of the linking sentences that I did between the two disparate points. Yeah, and then I said, right, so if it's got an OH, it will behave the same. Or yeah, similar. and I said, no, not the same. Well, then because not, they... we just learned. <laughs> because, all right, group okay, seven. Not exactly this... the same, not exactly the same, but... <laughs> <laughs> not exactly the same, but similar. Yes. You don't have to throw your microphone at me. Jeebus Liebers. And the reason why we're learning this and why this is important Mm -hmm. is because, let's say we knew what was... um, So, like, these things can, A, happen on bigger molecules that are more complicated, and B... You know, we need to know, like, you know, maybe we have something that we've reacted with ethanol and then we might need to react it with propanol for some reason. And we would need to be able to have a educated guess as to the effect of that before we did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm not arguing with you, Ron. I just didn't know why we didn't just say... If you see an OH, it'll always act the same. Because it doesn't have to just be an OH. It, that was just an example of a functional group, and there are lots of functional groups. Okay. For example, do you know what an amino acid is? Protein. Um, yeah, so they're the building blocks that make up proteins. Um, and essentially where the amino part of it comes, well, the, the two parts of it. So there's something called an um, amino functional group. That's on one end of the amino acid, right? What? So there's something called the amino functional group. Yeah, what does that mean? It's just the name of the functional group that I'm telling you about. What's a functional group? 
It's difficult because you've got groups. It's of... time for the pee break. It's time for the pee break. Got, I'm going you've for got a wee. Groups of atoms, and you've got Tell these someone other else. groups. I'm going for a wee. Fine. <laughs> Hi, Ron. Have you calmed down now? Hi. <laughs> no, not I've quite. Remember now, the there. functional group is um, the OH. But they've got their own version that's not an yes. OH, that's something else. Yeah, let me just get up a little table of functional groups. Yeah, so the functional group is the OH. It's just a little bit of the molecule that reacts the same no matter where it is. So we call it a functional but group. But it's not an OH when it's an amino acid. No, 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 because that's just that's why we call that one a hydroxyl yeah. functional yeah. group. Yes, amine functional group. Yes, okay. Okay, right, okay, cool. So, yeah, so the, the amino acids, they're the building blocks of proteins. They have two functional groups on there. Um, amino acids also have something that, um, basically, there are 20 different amino acids in a human that make up all of our proteins, okay? 20 acids in a human. There are 20 different amino acids that humans use to make the proteins that um, we're built out of, essentially. They have this little bit at the bottom of them in common, where on one side they've got the amine functional group, and on the other side they've got the, um, uh, I think it's called the acid functional group, basically. I can't remember exactly what that one's called, but basically it makes it an acid on one side, okay? Wait, what? They've got amine on one side? On the other side, they've got... The acid functional group. Hence, amino acid. Oh. These two things are linked by one carbon in between them. Okay. And then that carbon basically just wears 20 different hats. And some of these hats are really big, some of these hats are just one atom, and that's what different amino acids are, okay? If you say so, Ronnie Honks, I trust you like a brother. But all of these largely different molecules function together to make proteins because they have these two functional groups in the same place. Hmm. So you see how the functional group, no matter what the molecule is, <laughs> can help you determine what the molecule is going to do. Because you can see that you go, that's an amino acid. I know how that's going to react. I know what it's going to do. Yeah, because it's got a tail. No, it wasn't about the tail. It was about the other stuff. <laughs> that's fine. Hey, on an how do you make an though, acid then? Because that's a pH. What's a pH in a in an atom? What do you mean? A... <laughs> Hang on. Pause. <laughs> Amnesty. Right now. Yeah. Acids not not to do with phosphorus, hydrogen. It's not pH. No, it's to do with the pH level. But you said yeah. part of the chain has the amine in it and then on the other side of the yep. seesaw there's an acid and they're held together by yep. a little sea fulcrum with 20 hats on. So yep. presumably then the acid bit is just a little molecule of um, something that is the acid, but how has that got a pH level but the other atoms joined together don't? Do you really want to open Pandora's box of what acids and bases are right now? I don't know. No, not by the sounds of that. But it just... This is why well, I get distracted, right? because you this say is, something like that, no, and this then is my brain really goes, annoy you. ooh, down that little avenue, and well, then just makes up a story for We can go down this little avenue. But this is, this is going to annoy you, because... It all annoys water me. Does, water doesn't exist in the way that you think it does. Oh, bloody hell! <laughs> What have I been drinking all this time? So water exists, um, obviously, as the H2O molecule, but it also exists as a constantly breaking down and reforming um, H plus and OH minus molecules. Oh, for fuck's sake. In perfectly balanced water, pH 7, there is an equal number of H pluses and OH minuses. These could all join together and make water molecules if they wanted to, but that's just not how water really works. Because of entropy. 
Yes, exactly. In acids, there are way more H pluses. In bases, there are way more OH minuses. So, to, um, things that make acids are basically things that donate extra H pluses to the liquid. So, what is happening on the acidic side of the amino acid is there's a little um, carbon group, uh, there's a little functional group that basically donates a hydrogen, an H plus, to the water and makes it acidic. All right. That's why acids are. That's why acids are really like reactive. Is because they have all these H pluses wanging about that react with things. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sure. I'll never ever be able to explain that back to anyone, but I'll just be like, "Oh, there's positives and negatives in the water." Yeah, that works. Um, on a molecular scale, we can start predicting things as well. Okay. Uh, because do you remember when we were talking about enzymes, active sites? No. Lock and key. Ooh, the lock and key. I remember, yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. Um, they're getting a little shape to go in your tongue. <laughs> no, that's not it. I don't know, Ron. I don't know anymore. There's too much we've learned now. It's just a big soup in the middle. Um, so basically, yeah, it's just on a, on a large scale, you can start working things out as well. So if, if, if you discovered a new enzyme and it had a similar active site to one that you found before, you could hypothesize that it did a similar reaction. And the amino acid combinations within the active site will also start determining these things as well, which means that you can then start inferring like what different DNA like um, transcripts do and stuff like that. It's got big ramifications on a sort of macromolecular scale. What's the GCSE man going to ask me about this? I'm going to be honest with you, Laura. We've only really just gone through the paragraph before we get into the <laughs> content. Fuck off! Are you kidding None me? None of this is going to be in the syllabus. What are we doing with our lives? <laughs> oh, my God. I just thought it was interesting, and some of this podcast has to be for me. But does it, though? Because it's so... Oh, I've got a tummy ache trying to think about all this. <sighs> the best bit was the idea of having 20 hats. <laughs> Yeah, so we've just done the we've just done the paragraph in between it introducing the topic and then us going into the subject. Um, do you want to? Should we? Do you want to just chat that through some more? Do you want to <sighs> cover something else? Oh, I know what we can do actually because I missed out a bit at the end of the last um, bit because it just it was just a nugget. It wasn't enough. This is such a distressing topic, Ron, because there's nothing tangible to hold on to. But I thought you wouldn't mind it because you like to understand the why these things are happening, not just that they are happening. Yeah, I feel like you've said a lot and nothing all at once, like things that are the well, same, can, react can, the we, same. Yeah, but we can talk about specific... I can try and give specific examples, but those make <laughs> you quite cross. <laughs> you get cross too. I do. You ball up your little fists and wave them in the air. I think literal steam came out of my ears at one point. <laughs> and then you went out and pissed out the steam instead. Mm. Um, well, I just, you know. Yeah, what's this nugget then? I like nuggets. Oh, you won't like this. No. Um, it's just, it wants us to learn about the concentration of solutions. It says... You have to really focus if you're going to solve the problem. Many chemical reactions take place in solutions. The concentration of a solution can be measured in mass per given volume of solution, <laughs> e.g. grams per decimeter cubed. It's like ASMR now, isn't it? That 
against a 50p prize if you can tweet us or Instagram us and tell us what I was playing with there. Students should be able to calculate the mass of solute in a given volume of solution of known concentration in terms of mass per given volume of solution. What? Well, I can't do that. What's a solute? Is that some solution? One solution is a solute. Something that has been dissolved is a solute. Aww. Cute. <laughs> So cute. <laughs> Southampton so cute. Um, well, I can't do that. How do I do that? Uh, Decibels on, per read it again. Gram. Students should be able to uh, calculate the mass of solute in a given volume of solution of known concentration in terms of mass. Okay, so let's say, right, okay, let's say we've got a concentration, we've got an acid, right? Yes. We're doing carbonic acid. It's got lots acid. of H pluses in it. We're doing carbonic acid. The concentration you of the carbonic acid... You could fry an egg acid, on it. The concentration of the carbonic acid is 8 grams per decimeter cubed. Uh, hang on, let me write this down in case it's necessary. Carbonic acid. 17 no, I haven't finished! Stop it! Of water. Stop it! Because you're just How many me grams of because because carbonic acid do we have? I don't know, because when I tried to write it down, you kept on talking. <laughs> no, do it your fucking self now. No. Yeah. If you're going to be rude when I'm trying to write it down, you, you can do these sums yourself. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to. Higher tier only. Explain how the mass of a solute and the volume of a solution is related to the concentration of the solution. Are you teaching me higher tier? Uh, yeah, all of that mole stuff was higher tier. I didn't want to tell you because I thought you'd have got... Crush. I hated that mould stuff. What I don't know time. why. You said we needed another ten minutes. <laughs> I don't feel like this is viable <laughs> content. Well, I was ready to student my solute, but you kept talking even though I asked you to stop while I was writing down. Do you want to try that again? Why did you do that? Because <laughs> it made me laugh how flustered and cross you got. <laughs> That's not kind, is it? Right, carbonic uh, acid, what does that do? We have carbonic acid at concentration 8 grams per decimeter cubed. Concentration 8 grams per decimeter. Decimeter. Ooh. Do you know what a decimeter is? Uh, I think it was Russell Crowe in Gladiator. <laughs> Before my time, I'm afraid. <laughs> Maximus Decimeter Meridius. Um, and then let's say we've got 84.6 decimeters of water. How much carbonic acid do we have? Yeah. And you think I can just have those numbers and work it out? Yes. Honestly, <laughs> in this occasion, I do. OK. All right. Play the music. Right. I think I could put ink on a beetle's feet <laughs> and walk it over a page and it might get this right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be very cute. Uh, like in Mulan, don't they use the bug to do typing in Mulan? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I'd watch that. I have. Concentration, 8 grams per decimeter cubed. So do I just... Mulan, I'd watch that. <laughs> do I just cube 84.6? Why would you do that? To make it cubed water. It's already cubed. You have 84.6 decimeters of water cubed. 
So I have to uncube it. Do you understand the, the, the volume of... No, I just times that by eight. Yeah. All right. Fuck you, it's... Beetle. Because <laughs> guess who's getting there first? We've got, Shut we've up, the Beetle's going to beat me. Stop interrupting. Eight times... We've got eight grams per decimeter. 676.8 carbonic acids. Sounds about right. Is that good? I don't know, Ron. I don't know what carbonic acid is or what it's for or why we'd care how much there was. 676 what? Grams? Yeah. What's It's very funny doing this podcast with someone that just has utterly no desire for knowledge. Fuck you. I have loads of desire for knowledge. This isn't knowledge. But why is it... No, no, but I mean, like, like, in this, there's just no sort of learning it to learn it because knowledge is interesting. Because this is just shit numbers. <laughs> no, but what about because... all that stuff we were just discussing about how chemicals react? Yeah, but who cares? That was like shit off a duck's back <laughs> with your brain. It was it's awful. Not, no, it's nothing to do with my brain. But that doesn't matter, does it? It just doesn't matter. Of course it matters. How and why? Because everything in your life is a chemical process. Yeah, that everything. was going to happen anyway, regardless of if I knew what was happening. So you just think they should have a two-tier system where some people know and other people don't? <laughs> yeah, that is what it is like, and it's fine. <laughs> I spent the first... So well, let's say I learned this for what, five years at secondary school, then I forgot it all at around 17... So I've done 19 years of none of this affecting me in the slightest, and it's been fine. But do you not wander around and just be a bit like, oh, how does that work? Why does that happen? Not not with, like, a puddle and why is something fizzing in it? But not, like, maybe, like, when you're cooking or something? Well, what, what about... This is too small, though. The... As we discussed at the top of the episode, all of these things that happen just aggregate to give the the effect that happens at the end. Like the the effect that you see is just trillions upon trillions of atoms reacting with each other. It's not yeah. too small. It's everything. But I think I'm more interested in it at the bigger end. Like, oh, all these onion family are similar. It doesn't matter to me why the little seesaw has an acid on one half. But those onions are similar because of the DNA that they pass down and because of the proteins that make yeah, them up and the things that, that they're made I'm of. not eating a food thinking, oh, mm, delicious DNA. Like, the onion family-ness is enough for me. You know, like, you listen to a joke, but you don't then sit there for eight hours afterwards working out why the language worked and what it was about the alliteration and how you could spin off from that, where you could go further. You just enjoy it for what it is. And that's how I feel about planet Earth. <laughs> you were so close to winning me over then until you said that. Well, because I was going to say onions and then I thought that would sound stupid. So I said planet Earth instead, but maybe I should have gone with onions. Yeah, yeah that's fair enough. Human behaviour and, and why we react to things the way we do as people, that... I find way more important than this because this is just like. <sighs> Can we compromise on the fact that this stuff is obviously super important, but just not necessarily to your profession? Or me. No, but it is because all, everything that you do <laughs> and eat and have has been made by th people that know this stuff. Yeah, but if they hadn't done this, I'd just live a different way. <laughs> yeah, but it still impacts you. Yeah, but I don't know. So it does great. matter. No, it doesn't. I can still use a carrier bag, whether or not I understand polyethanol. But the knowledge itself matters. Why? Because someone had to make that carrier bag so that it could choke an albatross one day. And I wish they hadn't. So you were making like a kind of um, anti... A uh, tech sort of Luddite argument with it. Listen, Ron, 
I'm more than happy for there to <laughs> be science. Hey. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> I'm more than happy for science to exist. I just think there is very little point in rounding up 15-year-olds and asking them to care about carbonic acid. But it sparks it in some people. Fucking nerds. And then they go on to help stuff. <laughs> yeah, but this is, like... <sighs> throwing a lot of paint at a lot of people hoping to hit one, you know? You're not even listening, um, you're just typing. Yeah, well, it doesn't just hit one, though. Um, and you should be encouraging uh, more women and not men into STEM careers rather than just saying it doesn't all matter. Actually, I don't think you're being very helpful. <laughs> uh well, actually, no, I don't think I should be encouraging women into this. It's fucking pointless. <laughs> women are smart, empathetic, or beautiful creatures, and they should be out doing something real. Don't no, waste your that... life, ladies. Put some no, makeup that... on and go and do something real with your life. <laughs> the fact that women are uh, more empathetic and thoughtful is exactly why we need more fucking women in STEM, because men have been running STEM for way too long, and it's too much about the numbers. Yeah, well, maybe let's pick this podcast up again at a point where we're looking at what feelings carbonic acid has, and then I'll be more interested in it. Agreed. So a billion year hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you in a billion years for the quiz. <laughs> Eyo! Wapapau! Hello! Beep, 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 <laughs> um, so just to explain what the, do, you, do you remember those books when you were a kid that had buttons down the side and you'd press them at different points in the story and we had a Pocahontas one and then Miko and Flit, the little hummingbird and the raccoon if you pressed Flit, the hummingbird it went it was good <laughs> alright, let's just leave an edit break <laughs> Because that's not content. <laughs> that's staying in, that's mate. That's nothing. 32, it's an even number. It's me. I'm editing. Right. Do you remember what we were talking about last time? I think it was physics last time. No. <laughs> not a good sign. Was it not? No, it was chemistry. Oh, fuck. Was it? Yeah. We were talking oh. about um, chemical changes. Were they? Yeah. Right, hang on, let me get the notepad open. <laughs> this is not... Chemical changes? Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at this. <laughs> Someone from the past has left me some clues. <laughs> yeah, OK. Oh, no. Oh, this was like a nothing episode, wasn't it? And you were insisting it was important. <laughs> It was these little gangs that make people the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> However, um, <laughs> do you remember that at the end of the episode we went through concentration? Oh, no. Yeah. That was the only bit that was actually in the syllabus, so it's the only bit that's appearing on the quiz. Oh! I didn't care about at all. You didn't care about any of it. You were, <laughs> you were quite cross. Oh, do you know what this also means? Is that means it's not biology that we're recording today. No, we're about to dive into physics. Oh, fuck. As me. physics goes, it'll be fine. Fine. Um, so, Laura, what is the unit of concentration? Uh, grams per decimeter cubed. Yes, exactly. Ding. And there's only two as well, because we, we didn't really do a lot. Um, Laura, if I dissolved 384 grams of sugar in a pint of water, what would the concentration be? Oh, I don't know, and I'm not going to work it out. I don't get the point. What's the answer? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you need to work it out, then. 
No, I don't want to. Well, no, I just mug you zero there. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's the quiz one out of two. <laughs> Fucking hell. Aren't you supposed to motivate me to want to? No, 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 no it's concentration. Like, come on. What did you say? What did you even say? I said three, 384 grams of sugar in a pint of water. 384 grams of sugar? In a pint of water. In a pint of water. Have I got to break that into what sugar and water are made of? No, it's not moles. A pint of water. What does this even mean? <laughs> Do you know how much a pint is? 330 mil? <laughs> is it not? No, it's no. 528 mil. Oh, that's stupid, isn't it? 528 mil. I think, let me just double check. Pint in mole. Oh, no, it's less than that. It's 473. Oh, right smack bam in the middle of both of us. 473 sure. mil. Yeah. Um... Oh, how do you make Wait, a mill? Hang on. It's five six eight. That's the UK pintage. Pints are different in the US. What? It's five hundred and sixty-eight milliliters. Oh, this is too complicated. Five hundred and sixty-eight mil. Yep. How do I make that into a decimeter thirded? Cubed. <laughs> <laughs> um a decimeter cubed is the same as a liter. Ugh. Oh, fuck it. I don't care. Or oh, no. I don't want to. No. Oh, well. What a good try everybody did there. <laughs> everybody had a great try and no one cared. Um, thanks for listening. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so hard to care about the sums. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, we're just doing maths on the book. <laughs> <laughs> like, what am I even... When would this even come up? What am I trying even... Trying to work out the concentration or something. <laughs> Why would I care about the concentration of sugar <laughs> because water? Because other people live, live different lives to you. <laughs> this is... This is they didn't make this for <laughs> But why would a person ever need to know? If you know how much sugar's in there, why do you need, ow, need to know the concentration? You know that there's 384 grams of sugar in there. Yeah, but, you know, it's about how much is in there per the water that's in there. Well, two-thirds. <laughs> Ish. Give or take. Go on then, how would you work it out? <laughs> well, it's grams per decimeter cubed, isn't it? So I'd divide 384 by 0.568. Yeah, that's what I'd have done as well. Yeah, uh, Ron gets a mark. <laughs> yay! 18 more of those and you get a mole badge. <laughs> a mole badge? Yeah, that's what you get, mole badges. Okay. Maybe, wait, wait, wait. Maybe Bunchen should have a friend that's a mole. Bunchen? Bunchen. <laughs> maybe Bunchen <laughs> should have a friend that's a mole. Yeah? Yeah, do you want to pay to get this one designed, though? Because I can't keep wasting my money on cartoons in front of me. <laughs> no. no, I'll draw it. <laughs> yeah, let's put your drawings up against Matt's and see yeah. if you can tell which yeah, ones. I'll pay myself and it will be fine. <laughs> This is Giselle Bunchen, the rat. <laughs> and a friend of mole. Well, listen, this has fallen apart. Fuck it. We'll come back next week energised and ready to learn. Well, Ron, that was one of our worst quizzes ever. I know you didn't get a chance to listen to the um, <laughs> lesson this week, but it was the episode where you gave me a question and I said no. <laughs> I don't know. Let's move on. And you said, I don't know. I haven't worked out the answer. And then we just stared at each other in podcast for a while. Um, so just terrible. So thanks, everyone, for bearing with us through that absolute apathetic quiz there. Um, you can see why we needed a break for Christmas, I think, there. Mm. Mm. 
Um, anyway, thanks very much. Um, we wanted to say also uh, thank you, Robert, for your wheelbarrow picture on Twitter. Um, if anybody else has a wheelbarrow and wants to send us a picture, that's the kind of thing that we really don't mind being inundated with. No, and especially if, like Robert, you can um, let us know how long it is. Yes. Um, and we've also, I think it was Jen... Um, tweeted that we've ac- we've filtered into some actual teaching um which is terrifying really that that we could ruin more than just our own careers doing this so we are wondering if you'd found yourself using any lex ed catchphrases in real life yeah just um jen is a lovely ornithologist yes i think so birds um yeah birds um i don't know that from the have... robbie williams rap but for now, I'm down with ornithology. Grab your binoculars. Come follow me. <laughs> <laughs> Musical genius. Anyway, um, so yeah, let us know if we've um, accidentally slipped into your vernacular. And hey, just a quick reminder again, now that we're at the end of the episode, we've got a Patreon. Uh, yeah, if you're still hanging around now in the you love alleyway us. next to the bins of the podcast, then <laughs> come <laughs> Come hang out on the Patreon. Was I? I'm subscribed to a couple of Patreons. It's it's a nice place to be because you can comment on episodes and you can chat with the other weirdies that like the same niche shit yeah. as you. We'll be thinking um, about a Discord and thinking about increasing what we can put out if it picks up. So let us know what would entice you over. Um, the first episode of our extracurricular activity will be going out on the third of February. We thought we'd do it on the first Friday of the month. So. So you get your main episode on Monday and then something to tide you over the weekend on Friday. Mm, mm, mm. That's it from us. We will see you next week for the dreaded Fizarks. Yuck. We love you. Class dismissed, everybody. Oh, and everybody. That was very fresh. I have started doing like nice little... I, I started doing that last oh, year. It was nice. That's good. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.